So, um, you did have a perm, um, or would you, how would you classify a perm or relaxer before you had natural hair? I would say perm because I was never relaxed. <laughs> when I took it, I was always on edge. So, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> should, I, should I do that part over again? No, 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 that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> hair as hair that retains its natural texture. It's the texture that you were born with. Basically, natural hair is where the texture of the hair has not been chemically altered. Hair is important because for, for me, it's like our crown. It's our, the first thing that you see when you look at somebody, you see their face and you see their hair. So. It's, it's very, very important to us. I love my hair. I cannot put it into words. Like, I do wish it was a bit thicker, but I love my hair. Like, oh my gosh, totally in love with my hair because it is so versatile. For me, number one makes hair natural is for African-American women is one that has texture. And you're not trying to make it super, super straight or super, super opposite um, in texture. That's what makes it natural to me. Ideally, I would love for women to have natural hair. I want us to get to a space where having natural hair is normal. You can wear your hair blown out, you can wear your hair in braids, and it's, it's a normal thing. It's not something to have an entire forum about. There's some people out there who will say, that choosing to go natural is a very significant choice, right? Like you have to be ready for it, mentally, emotionally, which is interesting because when you think about it, it's just hair, right? So the fact that it has so much weight is, is interesting, but it's also kind of sad. Some of the biggest misconceptions that I've encountered about natural hair that you're automatically either, you know, you're growing your own vegetables and you're like, you're Mother Earth. You're always gonna be wearing kente cloth or, you know, dancing at the farmer's market or. Your revolution on wheels that you, you know, that you're up on what's going on in Sri Lanka and what's going on like around the world. My mother asked me every time she sees me, like, how do I comb it? Like, is it hard to comb my hair? And I'm like, Sometimes getting a relaxer is almost like a rite of passage for young black girls. It's just like when you are around 11 or 12, it's almost at a pointed time to move into like hair adulthood. So it's almost like a, a ceremony in a sense of coming to age. There was some type of chemical um, that my older sister put in my hair and I, and I was about 10, 11 years old at the time. And uh, it was kind of interesting to me as a child because the, the promise was that when the hair, when we would wash our hair and the water would go over my sister, my younger sister and our head, we would be able to see our hair straight enough that it would fall over the front of our head. And, you know, it was, that was, the goal there to straighten it and we could actually see that our hair change to the front. At the age of 16, um, the Jerry Curl came on the scene for me. And um, I, I begged my mom if I could get a Jerry Curl. And so she allowed me to get a Jerry Curl and I just thought that was the coolest thing. Now I did not have the drip, you know, that Jerry Curl drip. And um, I remember having to get my hair cut really, really, really short because I had some of my hair had still had, you know, some of the perm on. So they had to cut my hair really, really short in order for me to be able to get the perm, uh, the curly perm. Um, but I had the curly perm, believe it or not, this is going to sound really weird, but I had the curly perm until she was born. I didn't want a perm. My mom thought I needed a perm. And we talked to my aunt and then she's a hairdresser and then my hairdresser and they're like she doesn't really need a perm she has good hair 
And then my mom was like, well, I think she needs a perm. So she kind of coaxed me, convinced <laughs> me to get one. So I got a perm, 13. And I, didn't, I guess after a while, I didn't care very much. So like it was easy to take care of because I didn't have to do that much because I went to the hairdresser like every week. So after a while, I got like used to it and I accepted it. You know, sometimes she would say, well, she wanted her hair to look a certain way. Well, I couldn't make it look a certain way with the texture that she had. Mm -hmm. So I probably, you know, the more she asks, well, maybe we should think about you getting a perm, you know? And um, so I think that's how it kind of came about. Everyone had, you know, their hair all cute and permed and straight and curled. And I was looking at myself in the mirror like, dang, I want to do my hair like Mary J. Blige. I want to do my hair like salt and pepper. So, and I realized I really couldn't do that with, you know, with the way that my hair was. So it wasn't really, it was more so, I guess, societal. And what I was framing my mind around at the time as a young child. But I wanted the perm. I needed the perm. I had to have the perm. Everybody else had the perm. It was just, ugh, I needed the perm. <laughs> it, it was the rite of, it was that kind of rite of passage at that age. I began wearing an afro in high school, probably when I was in the 12th grade. And that was in the 70s, uh, about 73, 73, 74. Talk about confident, um, defiant, um, beautiful. It was just a huge, uh, empowering feeling to be, you know, uh, lockstep into who we are as a people. Well, I'm, I'm, I, I have to say uh, that Donna Summers probably uh, ended my afro. <laughs> you know, the year <laughs> disco came. <laughs> I went to a barber shop that was owned by uh, some Hispanics, and I told them I want to cut my hair. When I sat down in the barber's chair, he thought I had a wig, so he was looking for like clip-ons clip to, to take the wig off. And I told him, "No, this is all my hair. I just I want you to cut it." He was, he was upset. He's like, "Why do you want to cut your hair? Your hair is beautiful. It's soft." And he went on and on, giving me reasons why I shouldn't cut my hair. I said. I want it all gone. So he cut my hair and I was bald. I was completely bald. I didn't know, I had never seen my hair, my head the way it looked in a mirror and I was happy. I just decided I frankly had had enough and I just stopped and I went to my hairdresser and asked him, told him that I was not coming back for any more chemicals and uh, I wanted him to begin the process of cutting the chemicals out. And he told me under, in no circum, under no circumstances would he uh, be a part of this because I certainly, I was not, this natural hair would not become me. And he didn't want to have any parts of being, um, you know, responsible <laughs> for this, this new look I was, I was moving into. I ignored him and uh, began letting it grow out and I found a natural hair care uh, provider and she started me on my journey of, of lock, locks um, and I had about a half an inch of growth and it's been about a year now and I love it. It's the best thing I've ever done. Hello, my name is
take it slowly. Thank you. And, and nobody looks at it. What are you doing? No. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with the take it slow crew. Yeah. Um, just just like, going easy. Because I'm loving the, I'm loving the this. Money. I'm loving the crowd. I'm not ready for this pepper. Right. I'm just going. What I did was I'm just going to get used to this. <laughs> I just did it in steps. Like, I stopped getting relaxers, and then I stopped dying it, and then just like every time I would go, like every other week, I would just cut a little bit more and more and more, and then it just got to the point where it started growing so much that then she cut like that much all per day. So, but then it was like all even because we had all different lengths and colors. And if you do it slow, it'll be an easier sort of transition. I wasn't prepared for the big chop, but they did cut my hair about this short. So I remember walking out of the salon and my car was parked right in front. I remember walking out of the salon and some some guy beeped at me and I was like, oh, look at me. You know, guys do that every once in a while. And, you know, I was like, OK, well, you know, my hair's short. OK, I'm still cute. I was doing a lot of training. I was training for a marathon and um, I would see women with natural hair and I found myself relaxing my hair more often than I usually did because I had extensive training six days a week and I was relaxing my hair like every three weeks because it's really true that you can sweat your perm out like you really do get new growth faster and um, I was like I don't want to do this anymore. So I did my marathon and after my marathon, I became pregnant. So I was like, hmm, it's a good time <laughs> to go natural because you're not supposed to put chemicals in your body anyway. So I was like, well, let me just start now. I brought up the idea cautiously to my mom and dad. It didn't go over well. Actually, I remember when when I decided that I wanted to do it, I told my mom, like, I really want to cut my hair. This is, I've been thinking about it. I really want to do it. Instead, she took me to a hair salon to get my hair done. <laughs> What we do and how we style natural hair will have them leaving with so much confidence. Sometimes there's not even confidence when they leave our salon. I tell them, call me in two days or text me in two days because the amount of compliments they're going to get when they walk the streets and when they go to work and see these same people who they used to look at with their permed hair or whatever is going to be so different because you, Everybody can attest to this, that a new beauty comes out of a woman with natural hair. So I think the fun part is to kind of like educate them and to almost pep talk them, pep talk them. And a lot of times I have to pep talk them into, forget the hair. Yes, the hair looks hot because I just did it, but forget the hair. Walk like you're confident. Speak like you're confident. Just own everything about you and you will be beautiful and people will be attracted to you simply because of the confidence that you exude. Do you think it's possible for black women to have a perm or to have a relaxer and still fully love themselves? And still fully embrace who they are? Or do you have to have natural hair in order to fully do so? That is 
probably the best question I've ever heard in all my interviews. So you're going to ask me again. <laughs> go ahead. But that is a beautiful question. Like, I don't even have an answer yet. <laughs> but I'm buying myself some time. So go ahead. You ask know, me again. Okay. So this is the way I want to answer that question. I think that, yes, they can love themselves. Okay? They can love themselves as if they're permed. And they're absolutely confident, blah, 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 just like you said. And yes, I love myself. They love themselves. I think that they don't know how much more they can love themselves. So here is a city twist that we did. And so simple, so easy. You can wash it every day. And you can just easily style this. And you know what? If you think it's too much for corporate, okay, that's okay. Let's turn it into a nice corporate hairstyle. How easy you can do this. No clips, no pins, just with the hair itself. Denise, please model your gorgeous corporate natural hair. Mm. So you see, you can go from wild to corporate. You can go and from go wild to wild. No, hot. 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 H A U T T E. Hot. So who the hell said natural had to be boring? Not me. Oh no, not I. <laughs> Before I went natural, I thought I was all that. I thought, <laughs> I thought I was cute. I thought um, I had confidence. But when I went natural, I saw my true, beautiful self. I decided to um, put together Natural is Not a Fad because I was doing a whole lot of shows. I'm, I'm telling you, I went everywhere. Ohio, Toronto. I was doing so many shows. And by doing those shows, I saw that something was missing. And I saw that... It was a lot of vending, but there was no education. This is how we are choosing to wear our hair. We're becoming more educated and this is it. So that's why the focus of my event is all about education. You can shop, I have vendors, you know, you can shop and still have that aspect, but I wanted to educate the ladies in a large setting. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to learn more about natural hair care products and to just mix and mingle with other women who have natural hair. I'm newly natural and I'm loving it. I've had a perm for like 10 years maybe. Totally broke off my hair, stripped it of all the protein, it was thin, it was just horrible. So I decided I'm gonna cut my hair off, got a nice face, <laughs> and I went natural. And I'm loving it. I'm saving money, I'm meeting all these great people, I'm learning about myself. Why not? <laughs> What I love about these events, I always tell Jamisha that, is that every time I see an event like this, natural hair, there is absolutely no drama. Everybody's just so happy. This is what I want people to see in the black community. We are happy people. We're not that stuff that you see on television. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's just my take on it. Your question? I just wanted to ask you uh, a 
if you have a child that has a perm in her hair and her hair is very short, what should the mother do to just transition out of that? Well, someone told me, and I'm just going to re reiterate what I've learned. Um, she asked the question of if your child has had a perm and their hair is short, but you're transitioning, what is the best option? I personally don't recommend a big child. If I was seven years old, I mean, some kids were cool with that. But if I was seven years old, growing up in cruel America public schools, <laughs> I would not want a big child. You know, and I'm just keeping it real because bullying is real. You know, so the transition that I would say is maybe see if you can twist it yourself, or if extensions is the option that you want to take. Um, I think that's fine. A lot of people have issues with corporate America. I can't wear my hair like this because I work, I don't give a where you work. <laughs> do you understand me? Do you understand me? Because do you still do the calculations properly? Very good. <laughs> do you still come on time and do what you need to do very well? Very good. Then it doesn't matter how your hair is. Frankly, it really doesn't. And a lot of people who make it matter are black women themselves. Do you understand? So it is up to us to continue wearing our hair wild and natural and doing what we do so that people can associate corporate with still being natural. Do you follow what I'm saying? Very, very important. A lot of women will press their hair when they're going to work. Let me tell you about pressing. Did you see my look? <laughs> Because I even saw my look, and I can't see myself. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so let me tell you about pressing. A lot of people stop perming their hair because it breaks their hair, it does all kinds of blah, 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 right? right. So does pressing. It burns your hair straight, basically, and a lot of people have seen that if you press your hair, you press your hair, you wash it, and you're like, why is this part straight? That's what it does. And then now you have a half row. That, that's, <laughs> That is not okay. You understand? That is not okay. So there are other options. You want a straight fix, fine. Get a full head weave, whatever. It's, it's not that serious. At least your hair underneath is still natural and still very healthy. Everybody is not in this natural hair box. I dress fly. I wear makeup. When I was in corporate America working for the federal government, I wore my puff. I wore whatever I wanted to. And like she said, the Caucasians, the other people embraced it. And... My black sisters were, why are you coming to work? You know what that is. <laughs> I mean, you gonna run a comb through that? I did this morning. You're my fingers? I remember hiding my hair from my grandma because I knew that that would just be instant, instant source of antagonism and arguments because um, my grandma would, you can talk, talk about my mom for cutting her hair, cutting her permed hair. So even short hair for my grandma was like, I'm feminine and like, oh, are you a lesbian type thing? <laughs> so. I wasn't trying to have her see me with um, like short natural hair because she probably would have believed I was like an alien lesbian monster girl. When I cut out all the perm and started off with these baby locks and my hair was no longer processed, I went to a senior staff meeting and it was as if uh, an alien walked into the meeting room. It was uh, jaw-dropping um, looks and even until the locks began getting a little hang time, as they say, I got really crazy looks like, what can you possibly, what are you, you know, what is she thinking? Has she lost her mind? How could she come to work looking like this? A lot of these women know that when they're transitioning right now or they're trying to go natural, the first people to hate it or to say, uh, sweetie, what are you doing, is their mother. Parents were very, very, very upset that I cut my hair extremely upset 
to the point where there are some events, um, there are some events, family events that my parents didn't want me to attend because they were embarrassed that I had cut my hair. It took probably three or four years for my, my parents to finally warm up to my hair being natural. Family members, even my mother, would say things like, you know you want to get a relaxer. Like, that hair is tight, like tight. Like, she would do the fist thing, like tight. A lot of my coworkers, they were, most of them were like, wow, you look beautiful. Like, I, I love it. And some people were like, what did you do? Why did you cut your hair? So I explained it to them. They were like, oh, okay. But when I went home to South Carolina, <laughs> My family thought I lost my mind. They thought I went crazy. I'm in DC. Like, what are you doing? You know, what are you doing? And they asked me if I was going to lock my hair. I'm like, no. And they said, well, what are you going to do with it? You know, are you just going to wear it like that? And I'm like, uh, pretty much. You just have to build your confidence up and really make a conscious decision to support what you're doing and don't let like um, outside interference get in the way of what you choose to do. The person that I'm with now, you know, he's awesome. You know, I, <laughs> he, uh, he embraces my natural hair even more than I do sometimes. Like, it, it's made a bigger difference than I even expected it to. There's a difference of being in a relationship with someone who's just like, oh, okay, that's who she is. And being in a relationship with someone who's interested in what happens, you know, who's interested in the details of your hair, like, you know, wants to see you wear it out, like, I like it when you wear it down and you do this. It feels good to hear that. I think my dad, he, I think he likes it way better, natural, because I remember when I actually, like, used to get perms, and I always liked my hair straight if I got perms. He'd always complain and say he doesn't like it straight. He'd always want it to be curly. So now that like we have our natural hair and it's like kind of curly or more Afro, like he likes it better. I think most black men prefer women with natural hair because they want to touch our hair. They want to, you know, we can lay on them because when a black woman has her hair done, and it's lying and fried and they, they want to make sure that you have to sleep a certain way. You can't get that hair messed up. You know, you can't go swimming or do any activities because it's all surrounding your hair. And I think it limits stuff. Like he can't run his fingers through your hair. He can't touch it. Like, uh-uh, don't touch my hair. But with natural hair, you can do all of those things. It, it's not, you're not limited. I've heard how women, some women just need a perm. Like, and that goes to texture because good hair is acceptable. Like if it's wavy and it has loose curls, most men can handle that. But when your hair is tight and you can hardly get a comb through it, that's probably the texture that um, some of those men don't find as favorable. <laughs> I've dated uh, young ladies with weave for days. I've dated uh, dreads. I've dated uh, natural look. Uh, I dealt with this half white, half Asian girl, so she just let it let it flow. So you know they kept their hair up. I dealt with this girl with a closer shape of demise at one point. It's kind of odd, but you know she kept it up. She had the comp. She could work with it. You know she had the head shape. She ain't have like a bobble head type deal. So she she was good to go. So as long as you keep it up, you know hair is, is your hair. You know so as long as you got it, flaunt it. I mean you know just being in today's day and age. I mean we're looking at ladies with tracks, yeah. um, weave, lace fronts. Mm. You name <laughs> you name it. I mean so it's a big deal. You know. You know, you go into some stores, you know, it's a wall full of just hair. So it's like something that we have to look at, but the biggest thing is keep it maintained. You know, if you're gonna go natural, just put a little oil in it, some glitter, uh, accessorize. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm big on accessories. If you come outside and, you know, earrings and jewelry and, but but hair it is important. You, you don't wanna be seen with your woman and, you know, her hair is not maintained, especially as a man. 
and someone sitting next to me have hair, you know, women look at our hair, and if our hair isn't maintained, then it's a problem also. So we carry the same standard. Like say if I was single, right? Which I'm not, right? But if I was single, I couldn't go after a girl. I don't know if I would be fully attracted to a woman with uh, a perm. I just couldn't because for me, it says so much about you in, as, at 31. Um, I think that I would get to know you first, but I couldn't necessarily engage myself um, because for me, it's it's an accessory, but it's more than that. It's deeper than that. You know, me being me studying it and studying especially black women here in this country. Um, and if you've never, the biggest thing for me is if you've never seen yourself in your natural state, um, then what are you going to teach to your daughter? Because I know my little sister's my little girl, you know what I mean? I work in the middle school and I could talk to them about their hair and they like, ugh, nappy hair. No, no, uh, what you talking about? I talked to my little young man in my rights of past girl. They like, nah, with no girl with no nappy hair. It gotta be long. It gotta be, they gotta be, you know, they gotta look the part. They do what they see. And I'm uncompromising because I want people to know what the, you know, what the issue is and let's deal with it, you know? That, that's that's kind of kind of rough to say, I don't want to deal with this person because of their hair. And, and, and it knocks them out of yeah. out of the talking game. So. I don't know. That's kind and of that's why, I, and I battle with that too. Like, yeah, cause it feels yeah. like I'm being slightly superficial. You know what I mean? Cause I, I battle with it. Like, you know, I'm just oh, like, man. nah, your hair is like that. So I don't really, <laughs> I can't ride with you. Cause I remember my <laughs> wife when I was in high school, she had a perm, but I'm just realizing yeah. and when I, I'm older now and it's just, I don't know if it's my mindset and I, I battle with it. I was talking to my wife about it the other day. I was like, yo, I don't know. Like if I ever, if I, if I ain't, if I ain't had you and I had to go date again and it feels like it's superficial, it, you know, and I battle with it, but nah, I know another young lady, natural hair, and you know, you think, uh, you look at her from afar, it, you may even talk to her for a hot second, you think, she got her stuff together. And you really get in depth, yeah, you're like, yeah. oh my goodness, maybe she, oh no, no, she don't got it together. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so, it, it's, I guess, a different perspective, and if I'm just going off hair alone, yeah. then you can jump to those conclusions, but. I mean, some folks just don't have their hair game straight, man. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a bad deal, it's a bad deal. Yeah. So I'm gonna show you how I get this look and I just wouldn't show it for anyone, so hope you enjoy. All right, so you want us to start? Let's start. Okay. never wore my hair like this before. See, every day is different. And that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, and done. Ta-da! <laughs> Once your hair gets to a certain length, you start spending a lot of time washing your hair, conditioning your hair, deep conditioning your hair, twisting your hair, untwisting your hair. It just, it just takes a while. And I rather have pay someone to do that for me and have my hair style last two weeks, maybe three, if I really push it, and go right back to the salon. <laughs> <laughs> I went to a hairdresser out here. Um, her name is Jennifer Lord, and um, she styled my hair beautifully, gave me a little cute color in the front, a little cute color in the back, so I still go to her. A hairstylist is someone who can listen to the concerns of a client, be professional and creative. That's the balance that makes a good hairstylist. Um, someone who will take the time to be on time, use quality products, 
um, give you the attention, the individualized attention that you deserve, be reliable, and also does magnificent, gorgeous, beautiful hair. Hair that when you step outside that door, everyone attacks you. That's what I expect. If you go outside after you've left my salon and 20,000 people do not ask to tell you that your hair is amazing or ask you where did you get your hair done, then I just haven't done my job. I expect my clients to feel like a celebrity after they've left my salon. I want them to have a mental red carpet in their mind because that's what people are going to do. They're just going to turn towards you and look because I did your hair and it's a masterpiece. That's a good hairstylist. You want someone who everybody wants access to. You may not love Jennifer Lord, but in, when it comes to natural hair, as far as the work that I do, the hair that I do, the presentations, the productions, you can't say anything bad about it. I mean, you'd be lying. I think that this whole opportunity, this whole experience of me being a stylist and being a successful stylist to where I'm able to have my own business and make my own clientele is a, it's a blessing. It's definitely a gift from God. You know, some people wake up and they know this is what I'm going to do when they do it. That wasn't the case for me. It was always there and I was always doing it, but I never imagined that I would be doing it professionally. I was just down on my luck and, you know, by accident, I did hair out of my apartment, made some money, and it just clicked. Like, this is what I'm supposed to do. I make more money in two hours than I make at this job that I hate in eight hours. So I need to do what I need to do to get to, to do this, to make the money and to be happy while I'm making it. Um, that's that's the whole goal right there. It's to, when you're working hard and you're tired and you're stressed out, you still love what you do, you can still live with yourself. <laughs> I wasn't anxious in the sense that I was nervous, like, oh my God, what's gonna happen? I was excited. I was anxious, excited, like, all right, I'm gonna cut my hair. Like, I've never had a problem with having short hair um, because, again, I had cut my hair and it was basically short when I got my big chop. It wasn't the length of the hair I was concerned with, it was the texture. Because again, having had a perm for 20 years, I didn't know what my real hair looked like. I didn't know if I was gonna have, you know, really, really tight, tight curls or looser curls, you know. That was the only variable I was concerned about, like what is it actually gonna look like when it's done. I had already, you know, had friends who were like, girl, just go natural. Just just stop hermin it. Just don't worry about it. It's not, you know, it's not the end of the world. You know, it's just hair. It'll grow back. And you'll be a lot happier if you just stop with the creamy crack. So I did. I, that was my last perm was August of, what year is this? <laughs> so <laughs> August of 2011 was my last perm. <laughs> Andrea. <laughs> Meet Andrea. <laughs> You're done. <laughs> there were enough chairs. <laughs> Going natural has allowed me to be more comfortable who I am in my own skin. Not that I wasn't comfortable with who I was, but having the perm and feeling like I have to have my hair look a certain way to walk out the door or else I won't be accepted, it's kinda, it kind of messes with you and you don't really realize it. So it's a little, it's, it's freeing to just be like, yep, oh, oh. <laughs> no, I'm leaving. Yep. You're going to leave like that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kink, snaps, and all. And I'm walking out the door. And bye bye. And if you like it, great. And if you don't like it, so what? My advice for a woman who wants to go natural is to be delicate with your hair, be patient, be educated, uh, watch YouTube, Google, get on some blog spots. Be patient. Be patient with yourself, be patient with your hair, and be patient 
with the people around you. If you get frustrated, don't run to a relaxer. Weave it up, braid it up. Like, don't give in. Like, there are days when I'm completely frustrated, but when I get like that, I'll get braids or I'll get a weave. And that's your time where you can have silky flowy hair without compromising the integrity of your natural hair. So it's okay. If you want to braid it up, weave it up, there's nothing wrong with it. Do you think you'll ever go back to, have you ever considered ever? Mm. Is the possibility even remotely open that you would relax your hair again? I don't think I would relax my hair again. I really don't. I really don't. Um, I may have had that thought maybe once after I first cut it, and I was like, I don't think I can do this, <laughs> you know? And then my friends talked me off the ledge and like, you can do it, stick it out. It's not gonna look like this forever. Um, but no, I don't think I would ever go back to it. I will never go back to wearing a perm. I don't like the smell. I don't like what it's done. And uh, health-wise, I can't go back for my own personal reasons. I will not go back to wearing a perm. <laughs> No, I will never go back to wearing a perm. Um, that's not to say that I would never experiment with, uh, you know, I've experimented with hair additions or like, you know, like maybe natural weaves or, hey, I may even throw on a straight wig, but as for my own hair, I would never perm it. That's like, I can't even think of a, of a comparison that that'd be like bleaching my skin for me that's how it would feel i don't have to feel as though oh you know my hair is growing out the relaxer is growing out and i've got to get it done or you know somebody's going to know that i have nappy hair everybody already knows i have nappy hair my hair is reflecting my belief that in my natural african state I'm beautiful. Being light-skinned African-American, a lot of times people think, oh, well, you're supposed to have that good hair. And I'm like, well, what is good hair? I don't think good hair um, has to do anything with the texture of your hair. Good hair is healthy hair. I feel a lot different. I feel healthier inside and out, uh, mentally, uh, spiritually, and all, I feel completely um, different. I think I look at her a little differently. Like, I think she's more confident, so it like encourages me because she's my role model. So like it, I don't know, it encourages me and makes me happy that she's more confident in herself and her hair. And I think she like came into her own. I can jump in the pool and have a head full of luscious, tightly curled hair and then come home, put it up in a bun, straighten it, do whatever. Like, my hair has made me more confident because it is just completely versatile and it's God-given. So for me, I can't go wrong with that. I hope it says that I take myself seriously, so I want the world to take me seriously also. I hope it says that I'm someone who has contextualized myself within the African experience and that this is how I want to express that. I hope that it says that, you know, I'm creative. <laughs> I hope that it says I'm awesome. <laughs> That's what I hope my hair says. What it actually may say, um, I think is probably different from that. But uh, that's, those are the things I hope it says.